How you doing, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Cajun Conservative Show, where we talk about life, we talk about liberty, and yes, we talk about the pursuit of happiness, and we show you, the audience in the world, that Cajuns do have intelligence. Hope you're having a good day, good week. Remember, this is Good Friday. Happy Easter, everyone. If I don't get to see anyone or shoot a show before Easter, uh, Good Friday, and a weekend to remember that our Lord and our Savior paid the ultimate price to redeem us from our sins. It is a free gift of salvation. All we have to do is accept it. And we're going to talk more about that in the third, uh, I guess you could say the third segment of the show today. Uh, I started doing something a little different. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do at least three segments or three stories. So uh, so I, I, I haven't written down a segments for my last format of how I used to do an hour-long show. And I'm, I'm just going to see where it goes. But happy Easter, everybody. Uh, hope you have a good weekend. I know our weekend is full with people that are going to be watching, uh, going to be uh, with events uh, where Brother Swaggered, and them are having their Easter camp meeting. If you can watch it on SBN, go ahead. Great time. Um, and uh, this is Good Friday. I'm about to go do some yard work and then uh, possibly heading that way, doing some other stuff. We don't know. Uh, announcement, we are back on TikTok Live after ha being off for a week. Uh, I'm glad to be back to my TikTok audience. I have fixed it up to where you can hear some of the music and some of the audio. I have a video today. I really want people to, to hear uh, about the view. And I'm excited. I'm excited to, to, for this episode. All right. So let's jump right into it. Uh, just a reminder, please like and subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening on the audio podcast or on YouTube and Rumble, if you're watching on TikTok, hit the, uh, the follow button. It would help me out more than you know. Also, hit them hearts. I'm seeing them hearts fly right now. Hit the hearts. It helps me out more than you know. Follow me on the uh, on TikTok, and you get these episodes live when I do them. Sometimes they uh, they fluctuate from 5 a.m. to when I'm off. So, you know, but enjoy the live. Love having people so far. We have reached over, over 300 some people right now. We're at 235. So, TikTok, follow me. Follow me, follow me. It helps me out more than you know. Let's get this word of conservatism out there. All right, let's jump right into it. The View co-host blasts Trump for selling God bless the USA Bibles. It's pondering. This is from The Hill. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I also pull from left-leaning media. I don't do it normally, but I do pull and I do read uh, left-wing media. I, I have CNN. I have CNN politics. I have political I have I have uh, I have the Daily Beast on my list, so hey, I read I read left leaning media. So if somebody's watching and says, "Oh, you know, uh, you are you you just you just go ahead and pull from right wing," no, I pull from the hill. All right, so um, so last Wednesday, well, last Tuesday, correction, Donald Trump announced that him and Lee Greenswood, the writer of "God Bless the USA," came out with "God Bless the USA" Bible. I I, I haven't seen any pictures of it. The only thing I've seen of it was Donald Trump's Donald Trump was holding it up in the announcement. The Bible selling for $60, which I'm going to address that in a little bit. Um, very that, for a good study Bible. That is very cheap. Now, I don't know. It, they say it holds the constitution in it. It holds the, um, it, I think the bill of rights and they have the lyrics of God bless the USA in it. And like I said, Lee Greenwood, it, it, great song. God bless the USA. I, I've always said that, if they would ever have to change the national anthem, that would probably be the best one. Um, but, but they teamed up and they sold this Bible and they're selling it for $60. Uh, like I said, I've bought Bibles. My, one of my study Bibles cost almost $90. And I've been blessed with study Bibles. I've been blessed with commentary. So that that is not that expensive. That is, in, in reality, that is very cheap for a Bible. Now, there, there is cheaper Bibles or, or less expensive Bibles, uh, as I was taught to say in retail. Um, but the view thought this was a, uh, this was a terrible thing. Um, they, they started out by playing, the, uh, playing the, the announcement and Whoopi kicked off the conversation by just having a, a like, like, a, a, like the surprise. She was just surprised at what Donald Trump was doing. And she kicked it off by saying, okay, I don't know anybody. She just couldn't say nothing. And watching the video, I don't have that video up. I do have a video of the view saying some things later on that was in my opinion, shocking. But the the view, they, they looked like they were just, they were annoyed. 
They were, they were annoyed that Donald Trump selling Bibles and that uh, Lee Greenwood would go ahead and, and, and team up with him. And they just started throwing insults. Uh, Jay Be uh, Joy Behar uh, made laughter by saying the last time he uh, was on his knees was, was he pick when he was picking up a French fry. And then you had one of her co-hosts uh, co uh, co say, or when he was picking up a burger, just, just insulting him. Um then, then Behar brought out the, uh, the 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 testimony of uh, how Donald Trump was uh, well, Trump's former lawyer slash fixer Michael Cohen, who claimed that the former president once told his him pastors are hustlers and that the Trump complained about pastors who laid hands on him during a 2011 message. Granted, this was all done before he was president of the United States. Um, they called him a hypocrite. Uh, this is hip, this is hypocrisy at its most religious. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you have watched The View that much. I, I catch it on a somewhat semi basis. I don't watch it all the time. Uh, but ain't the women on The View hypocritical? Isn't The View hypocritical? Okay, this these are the people that 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 say Donald Trump did X, Y, and Z, while their candidates like Hillary Clinton, Bill uh, Bill Clinton, um, Joe Biden, did crimes that you know. I'm, I'm gonna use an example. Okay, let, let's go to this with the uh, the Ukrainian impeachment deal that went on with Donald Trump. Oh, this is horrible that Donald Trump would would, uh, would 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 bribe another country, tell him that he wouldn't give them money unless they did what he wanted them to do. It's horrible. But you have Joe Biden sitting on a on a stage in front of cameras saying, you know what, we wanted that prosecutor Fired, I told them I would tell Barack Obama not to give them money. And you know, well, that's so be. They fired the prosecutor. This is the this 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 is the same view that apparently didn't see nothing wrong with that. They, this is the same, this is this is the same people that 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 said that Donald Trump should be locked up in jail for having classified documents. While their candidate and president now, Joe Biden, dropped off classified documents in many locations, at least four that we know of, and one of their former candidates and was a secretary of state, Hillary Clinton, deleted 30,000 emails. But The View said that's all right. Who's being hypocritical? Is it Donald Trump or is it The View? I'm, I'm, just, ask, I'm just asking questions. You know, I always say what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Um, they attacked one of the hosts attacked Donald Trump for a tweet where he talked about tacos. Um, Allison Farn Griffin, a former Trump administrator and um, uh, administrative aide, she she says she's a Christian. Okay, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna question somebody's Christianity, but um, she made a point. She said he's selling these. Uh, selling those for $60 and I'm a Christian. As soon as I heard it, that price tag, I think of the persecuted church Christians around the world who risked their lives to have one page of the Bible and to be able to read the scriptures in places like China, Saudi Arabia, and Syria, where you can't practice your faith openly. She said he is using it to profit off like, like, to, like that tells you all you need to know about this man. Hold on. Um, miss, Allison, don't you know, we mentioned Jimmy Swagger and him early. Do you know there's a program at Jimmy Swagger Ministries to send Bibles overseas? Do you know that I know missionaries personally that have went to Mexico, went to Pakistan, went to India? They have, they have gone to Kenya and hand out Bibles? And there, there, there's missionaries smuggling in Bibles? Now, look, is Donald Trump trying to make a buck? It would not surprise me. The Bible is the number one selling book in all the universe. It has sold more copies than any book that I, if, if I could be wrong, but. But ladies and gentlemen, she's trying to use that. If Donald Trump's greedy. I don't see why any Christian would, would, would stoop low to buy. Well, hold on. I just said at the opening statement, I bought Bibles $90. 
Great study Bibles. Now, look, we're privileged in America to have Bibles, and we can buy Bibles. But you you go ahead and you, you, you make this point, oh, the persecuted Christian. Really? Okay, if you're worried about the persecuted Christians in the other countries, do what Jesus told you to do. Sell your house, sell your car, sell, sell you, and, and give to the poor, the persecuted Christian. Buy Bibles to send people. Now, she might do that. I don't know. I'm just saying. Trying to make a point. Oh, Donald Trump's just trying to be greedy because he sells Bibles for $60. We're in America. Like I said, it's, that is very cheap for a good Bible. And look, I bought Bibles $10, a dollar. I bought Bibles for very cheap. But for a good Bible, hey, I paid some. I look, I, I can show you all the Bibles I have. They're study Bibles. I study God's word. Um, Sonny Holston later interjected is blaspheming. And they just, they just had a lot of problems with Donald Trump selling a Bible. Now, I want, to, I want to go ahead and ask a couple of questions. One, what is wrong with Donald Trump selling Bibles? Okay, what is wrong with Donald Trump selling a Bible? No, there's nothing wrong with Donald Trump selling a Bible. He has the right to do that. What is his intentions? I, I don't know. I don't know Donald Trump personally, and I don't know Lee Greenwood personally. They maybe said, hey, look, let's get together. We're two big names. We can sell these Bibles, and we, as they said, we can get more, more Bibles into homes. Now, look, Donald Trump said we Donald Trump said he has a lot of Bibles around his house. I will criticize I will criticize this. Do you read them, Mr. President? Because look, you can have Bibles in your house. That don't make you a Christian. I, w I will say that. I will say that. You will you you can you can have 20 Bibles in your house, but if you don't apply them to your life or you don't apply the words that are in the Bible to your life, that don't make you a Christian. Because there's a lot of people around this nation that already have Bibles in their home. And look what our world's going to. Because people fail to open up the Bible. I, I Look, I think more people need Bibles. But at the same time, more people need to read their Bibles. That This is the minister side coming out of me now. Donald Trump thinks, hey, let, let's, let's sell Bibles and get as many Bibles into the homes. You can have 20 Bibles in the home. If you're not reading it and applying it to your life, guess what? You... Or not, you, 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 if you're not reading it to your life, it's, it's useless there. It's just a book. It's just a book. If you, if it's something to decorate your house with. That's all it is. But, but there's nothing wrong with Donald Trump selling a Bible. But the view have a problem with it. They have a problem with Donald Trump reading a Bible. And the, the real reason, I'm, I'm, I, this is what I feel, this is my opinion. The real reason why the view has a problem with Donald Trump selling the Bible is because, one, they hate God, and two, they hate Donald Trump. Let's start with the God issue, okay? They, look, Allison says, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be on The View because the other four ladies that are on that, that show, sometimes five, are abortion activists. They, 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 they agree with the LGBTQ stance. They agree, they, they, they agree with everything that the Bible says no. They push everything that is wrong. Now, this is my opinion, and I read the Bible. I live a biblical life, so guess what? I read the Bible, and the way they think, guess what? It's not, it's not right. So for Allison to say, I'm a Christian, and be sitting on that stage, I have an issue. I, I, I've always had an issue with Republicans going on left-leaning media, Just not, but also Christians. Some Christians take, they, they feel the Lord telling them to go. Hey, I'm not going to deny what the Lord tells you to do. Go. But the, the reason that they don't like, first off, Donald Trump promoting a Bible is because it's promoting God, and these people are God haters. Now, I'm about to show you a clip that I'm gonna, uh, and the people that are listening um, that are going to hear this clip of them making a statement about a flag in the Bible. But they, they hate God. And this, the, the way they act, the Bible says you're going to know them by their fruits. Then they hate Donald Trump. Donald Trump could be going ahead and, and announcing a cure for cancer. And the view, those, those, those women on the view, would go ahead and say, well, this is going to put millions and millions of doctors out of work. We should not promote this. Um, they, they hate Donald Trump that much. It don't matter what Donald Trump does. Donald Trump could, 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 could be president tomorrow and say, listen, 
The debt is wiped out. We are no longer in debt. Our country is financially independent. We can do whatever we want. And the view would have a problem with it. That, oh my goodness, he took out the debt. What are we going to do? And they will make up some excuse to, to blame Donald Trump. And this is why they were annoyed. This is why when this, this announcement came out, they were like, oh, I can't believe Donald Trump did. ain't selling a Bible out of all of it. Oh. They weren't disgusted because... Because Donald Trump was selling a Bible. They were disgusted because God, Donald Trump is telling people, hey, read God's word or have a Bible in your home. Again, going to the point about having a Bible does not make you a Christian. It only says you own a Bible. Now, with saying this, that because they hate God and they hate Donald Trump, they think this kind of behavior is dangerous. Um, I have a video, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna listen. I want you to listen to it right here, because apparently, they think you, as an American citizen, if you have a Bible and you love the American flag, you're a fascist. Oh, Isaac, how dare you say that about the view? Well, let me let, watch this video right here, and I'm gonna show you in, in my TikTok live audience and my my, my uh, podcast audio listeners. Listen, take a listen to this what Joy Behar and other members of The View think about you owning a Bible and being patriotic and waving your flags. Watch this. It, it's a historical saying that, and I'm not sure who said it, when fascism comes to America, it will be waving a flag and holding a Bible. Take yeah. a look. Yes. Yep. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, that's when pretty When fascism good. comes to America, it will be hold, waving a flag and holding the Bible. Yeah. That is what we are looking at right now. Yeah. Remember that in November. It's it, It's a historical saying. All right, so Joy Behar quoted a saying from, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Sinclair Lewis. She didn't know who he was. I did the time in the research to go find out who said this. And he said it in one, in one of his books. If you look at the title of his book, he was an extreme liberal. And on that note, probably a God hater. And somebody that, that did not like democracy. But Joy Behar quoting this. That fas when fascism comes in America, it's going to be holding a Bible and waving an American flag. Ladies and gentlemen, that's dangerous. This is this is one of the. That's why I say they hate God, and they hate Donald Trump. But also, if, they, if they're acting like this, if it's wrong to wave an American flag, they must hate America as well. For making a statement like this, quoting a, a, a extreme liberal, to say that it is fascism to hold the Bible and wave an American flag or love the American flag. So you're telling me that half of America, because we got 350 some million people. If you go according to um, the last uh, presidential election, half of America, or a little under half of America, voted for Donald Trump. And pro ha almost all of them are patriotic, loving Americans that hold the Bible. So you're telling us that half of America is fascism. Think about this. that This is what they're saying on The View. That... You, you that hold a Bible and wave an American flag, and, and I know my YouTube audience and my Rumble audience can see it, the podcast audience and the TikTok listeners did not see it, but they show a picture of Donald Trump at CPAC hold, hugging the American flag and kissing it and standing in front of a church with a Bible in his hand. And they call him fascism. They call it fascism. So they're applying that anybody that votes for Donald Trump or backs Donald Trump, as yours truly does, is a fascism. It's fascist. That is dangerous. That, and this is the view. This is the view of the view. And look, all you people that are on TikTok right now that's listening and, and bashing me for my opinion right now, and all you people that are going to listen to this uh, after I record this and tell me, ah, Isaac, you're making assumptions. I just, I just showed you the proof. I just showed you the video. And I'm going to stick to my stance. They hate God and they hate Donald Trump. And, it, and they're going to make statements like this. Now, it wasn't Joe Behar. She was quoting Lewis. But at the same time, this is dangerous. This is their thought process. Now, you might be saying, Isaac, 
What does that? What does this have to do with me? The view has their opinion. Like you have your opinion. You can. Okay. You know. You know what the problem with this? And you, why you should care? Because what these women, most of these women, I'm not going to talk for Allison. I don't know Allison, so I'll quote her by her first name. More, most of these women that are on The View have the view that Christianity is bad, Donald Trump is bad, the Republicans are bad, and we're not... They, okay, we think they're good people with bad ideas on the left. Most of them, at least. At, almost every extreme liberal thinks that we're bad people with bad ideas. I'm talking about Republicans, conservatives, right wing, whatever you want to call it. Why you should care is because half of our leadership right now, the Senate is 51-49. House of Representatives are controlled by the Republican Party, but we only have a one vote majority. So half of, the, half of our leadership in both chambers of the House and in the presidency believe what these women believe. This is why you should care. Because if, 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 the, if the president of the United States, this, I don't know Joe Biden's thoughts, but if Joe Biden believes it is fascism to wave an American flag and to hold a Bible in your hand, that's dangerous. That is. And this is why in November, if you're a conservative or a Republican, you need to go vote. And if you, even if you're a Democrat, if you're a common sense Democrat or a common sense liberal, would understand the impact of just what Joe Behar said, that when she quoted from Sinclair Lewis, that said that it is that when you see fascism come to America, now he was, this was written, I think, in between the, the 20s and the 30s of the 1900s. He wrote this. That it is fascism. When you see fascism come, it's going to be holding, it's going to be waving an American flag and holding a Bible. Just the impact of that statement can jeopardize the freedoms of America. And if our, if our friends on the liberal side believe that, you need to vote for, for Donald Trump. And look I, 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 look, I know I push this home, but us Republicans, we need to vote in the right people. And I'm going to say this too, okay, on this note, because my friend Gabriel Swagger, and I was thinking about pulling up the video um, Wednesday night, said this, our country is doomed if we don't vote in the right people. And he took it a step further. We need to vote for Christian people or somebody that holds our values. Look, is Donald Trump a Christian? I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, a lot of people might get mad. Oh, you say Donald Trump not a Christian? Uh, look, Donald Trump's a flawed human being, but Donald Trump is not Jesus Christ. He's not the he's not the savior of the world. This country cannot be fixed by Donald Trump. Yes, he holds to my values. Well, some of my values, and I think he's better than Joe Biden. So that's why I'm voting for him. If I would have saw Joe Biden that was it was better than Donald Trump, guess what? I would have voted for Joe. I would have voted for Joe Biden, but I don't see that right now. I don't agree with John Kennedy, uh, Robert Kennedy. So I'm not voting for Robert Kennedy. I'm voting for Donald Trump. But in, in the hindsight of this, and this is how I, I, I look at every election. Are they a Bible-believing Christian? Are they, are, are they somebody that believes in the values of biblical principles? And that's how I determine. If, they, if I, there's no candidate like that, well, guess what? All right, who's the one that... that, that that, that, that is close to my views. And that's how I go to it. And look, we need more people. We need men and women to run for office that are going to be leaders and want to put God back in this nation. I understand probably all my left-leaning friends will tell me, oh, Isaac, you're trying to be a Christian nationalist? No, you have the freedom of religion here. You can believe whatever you want to believe. And I, I will discuss your belief with you if you would want but at the same time, don't, oh, you're a fascist because you're holding a Bible and waving a flag. You have the right to believe what you want to believe. But, uh, but, and you have the right to vote for whoever you want. If you want to vote for Joe Biden because he's closer to your values and your opinions, go ahead and vote for him. I'm not going to, I will tell you what, I disagree with Joe Biden. You can tell me what you disagree with Donald Trump. And guess what? 
we can mutually agree to disagree or one of us is going to change each other's mind. That, that, that's what's good about living in America. We have the right to do that. But in my, this is my show and I'm going to say the way I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to say what I, I feel. We need God fearing people in America. Or somebody that holds a close view to what the Bible says. And if we get people that believe like Joe Behart, that, that feels that if you're holding an American flag and holding a Bible, that your fascist is dangerous. And they, it, look, communism came in by taking away loyalty to the country and God. And it, 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 unfortunately, our country is heading that way. And we need, we need something. We need something to change. Because if we, go, if we keep going down this slope, America has dark days ahead. And this is one reason why I have this show. This, uh, and this is why I stretch out to go on TikTok. This is why I, I go ahead and, 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 and make videos is because I want to, to make people know. Okay. Uh, to, all the, to all the people that are making nasty comments on TikTok, hey, love you, view, love you, view. thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm turning the other cheek on TikTok right now. I'm seeing some comments come up. Uh, anyway. All right, so let's go on to the second story. Uh, and this is a pretty shocker um, for me. Um, well, it's not that much of a shocker. Uh, so there's a, there's a mega church in, um, this is coming from the Christian Post, uh, in North Carolina called Elevation Church. Pastor is Stephen Furtick. Now, if, you, if you're wondering why does Elevation Church sound familiar, if you ever heard of Elevation Worship, you, this is their worship team or their, their, their group that puts out music. And this is how they got popular. It, it, um, Stephen Furtick, and look, I, I don't know if people like Stephen Furtick or whatever, but uh, Stephen Furtick is not a doctrinal preacher. And he, he has, this is the man that we, we talked about this a lot on Brothers Just Searching. This is the man that said, you know, uh, that he was God Almighty. Because he's part of the Word of Faith movement, and the Word of Faith movement believes that if you have enough faith, and that you have you 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 believe enough, you will go ahead and uh, you can fulfill your life desires. It's based on the prosperity gospel, and Stephen Furtick is knee deep into this. Well, his church put out a bulletin this week, and they were inviting people to their Easter production, and there is a digital creator the digital content uh, director at Elevation Church. And look, look, thank God for some some big churches or mega churches. Uh, I mentioned a few times on here and no pun for no 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 sponsorship or anything for them but Jimmy Swagger Ministries. I've worked at Jimmy Swagger Ministries. I had the pleasure of meeting uh Jimmy, Donnie, uh Gabe and me we're we're we're, we're not close but at the same time we see each other we'll talk a little while. I know a lot of the staff there at Brother Swaggart's. Thank God for mega churches like them, and they they do pre they do present the gospel a lot. But there is some churches like Elevation that you wonder what is their mindset. Is it the gospel or is it to to fill up the seats in their church? Why do I say that? Because this digital content creator for Elevation Church um, put out a bulletin. And they wanted people to come. And when 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 asked about this, the first word that this was her this was her response to someone asking, uh, when I think about how I'm going to talk about Easter, I'm thinking about how I'm going to talk to people from far from God. Because that's the thing that matters most to us, Sharon said. Adding the church, adding the church was to wants to reach the unchurch and church alike. The content, uh, the digital content creator went on to say, um, responsibility, responsible for what Elevation says and how it says it, said the Easter and Christmas are the only two events of the year that are actually wrapped around particular passages of, in the Bible. I'm putting a lot of my focus, energy, time, resources towards what I would call the, the cold audience people far from God. She reiterated, I'm not going to say the word Calvary. I'm not going to say the word resurrection. I'm not going to say the, say the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to say any of those words that make someone feel like an outsider. 
This is really important. This is a really important guide for how we develop language. Anyone can be part of our church. It might not be for everyone. Everyone might not like it, but everyone can come. Okay. Um, the, the, the content creators say, I'm not going to say the word Calvary. I'm not going to say the word resurrection. I'm not going to say the, 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 say the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to say those words that make someone feel like an outsider. This is really important. What's the point of Easter? <laughs> okay, so, so, so okay, let's listen to this. All right, Easter is, 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 is supposedly to be a Christian holiday. There is some roots in the back. And it, like, so if you want any of, talk about, if you want to learn about Easter, go check out our other podcast, Brothers Just Searching. We dive into Easter. We say why we we call it, we call it Resurrection Week or Resurrection. Uh, some people call it Holy Week. Um... What, what is what is the point of Easter then? All right, think about this, all right? What is the point of Easter? The, 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 whole, the whole concept of Easter is to remember, I said at the beginning of the show, and we're going to talk more about it in a little while, is talking about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Most of the Christian faith understand that. And look, the death of Christ, if you do studies on it, was horrible. Jesus paid an ultimate price for us to be saved. The, the, the crown of thorns alone was extreme, extremely painful. A lot of people think of thorns as these little thorns. No, they, they were a good maybe inch, inch and a half long, two inches. Uh, no, correction, longer than that. Um, they, when, they, when they went into him, they pierced his skull. That's just brief of what I can, I can barely tell you on these platforms. The death of Christ was horrible. His burial, well, you know, people were sad that Jesus died, but his resurrection, it's, it, as a Christian, it, it lifts me up. That, that one day that, yeah, that I'm a Christian and I'm going to live, for, I'm living for Christ and one day I might die. I say might because the rapture might happen. I believe in the rapture and I'm, I might never see that, but there's a good chance I'm going to die, a, a pretty good chance. And... I'm going to go to heaven, and when Jesus comes back, I'm going to be resurrected in my body. I'm going to be just like him. That's a promise in the Bible. And that's what Easter is about. That's encouraging. And it's the gospel. Jesus died. He suffered and went to the grave. But he rose again to give us new life. But for a church, like Elevation Church, to go out and say, and I'm going to quote again, we're not going to go ahead and mention the resurrection. We're not going to say the blood of Jesus. We're not going to mention the word Calvary. Well, guess what? You need to either fire the content creator that you hired, the digital creator, or you need to you need to turn you you need to say your church is not a church and say it's a social club. Because that's the whole point of Easter. All the points that the person said we're not going to mention. And why why not mention it? Well, to make people feel good. So really, you're going to hide the truth of the American people. Think about it. You're going to hide the truth of the Ameri the, to the American people or to the church just to make them feel good? Well, then you need to turn yourself into a, a social club. And this is a part this is part of the problem in America. We have a lot of problems in America today. But one of the problems, and this is me talking, and this is, I guess this is my minister side of me. I, I, if you don't know, I am an ordained minister, and I am a youth, uh, the, a youth director at a church. The part of the problem in America is that, first, the American church is not preaching the truth, and we just deny truth all the way. You can go to science, you can go to whatever. The, the American people, for some reason, don't like the truth. Why? Because it might be offensive. Especially in the Christian world. I hear this all the time. Oh, Isaac, we can't mention that. We can't mention Calvary. We can't mention the blood of Jesus. Well, why? It's going to offend some people. The truth offends people. The, the, the death of Christ was, was, it was, it was gruesome because it showed how much bad sin is. Oh, well, well, well we can't make people feel uncomfortable in their sin. Why not? Okay, I'm not, I'm not up for uh, offending people, but... Uh, Somebody told me, well, Isaac, if you weren't trying to offend people, you got into the two the, 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 the podcast world that you got into conservative podcasting and you got into Christian podcasting. You're gonna offend some people. But people don't want the truth no more. Especially in church. They'd rather have, as the Bible says, the tickling of the ear. 
instead of having the word of God taught to them correctly. And Elevation Church just showed me that they don't want the truth. They don't want the gospel. They don't want, they don't want, they don't want the truth of Jesus Christ. The whole point of Easter, it's every point that they said they're not going to mention. But they want people to come in and fill the church. They want the non-church people. Okay, look, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a point like this. I want non-church people to come into my church as well. You know why? Because I love them enough to tell them the truth about Jesus and tell them that Jesus Christ died for them and that John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I love them enough to tell them the truth. Prime example, and this is for everyone that's listening. Would you let your child touch a hot stove? Oh, well, of course not. You tell them the truth. Hey, it's hot and it can hurt you. Uh, absolutely. But if you say, hey, I, want, I don't want to warp their pers personality, so you let them touch the stove. But I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah, but now they're hurt in other ways. And th this is how, this is what I feel they're doing. And, and look, the Elevation Worship, Elevation Church, Elevation Worship, we sing their songs at church and all. Is, they're popular. They have fame and fortune. But to get more money in and to get more, uh, more glamour, they're going to hide the truth, and it's wrong. And look, going back to, to my good friend, Pastor Gabe Swaggart, that said this last Wednesday night at their camp meeting, where I, they, their ministry is not going to, they're going to mention Calvary. They're going to mention the blood of Jesus. This ministry here at BGS Media are no longer two ministry. We're going to mention Christ and his blood. Because that's the truth, and that's the only way to heaven, in my opinion. And I'm a biblical person, so I believe it's biblical truth. And I'm not going to stop proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. But for Elevation Church, and if you, you're in North Carolina and you attend there, stop. Because that is not a true church. A true church that denies Christ is not a true church. All right. With that being said, I got one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the Easter message, which I think... I kind of covered it in that 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 uh, that segment, but uh, and look, I don't have no articles. I, I was planning on writing something in my notes. If you look at, if you see, I'm looking down. If you watch on YouTube, Rumble, or TikTok, you notice I'm looking down a lot. Come look at my notes. But um, I just I want to I want to say this to 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 close out this show that this weekend is. Is a, it's not, I don't believe this, were, this was the date that Christ died on the cross. Okay, it fluctuates every year. Um, Easter is fairly early this year. And, um, but this is a weekend that we, stand, we set aside to remember Christ and his resurrection. Now, if you're watching this and you are somebody that says, well, Isaac, I looked into the background of Easter and... A lot, there's some pagan things in, in it. Yes, there is. Like I said, you can go listen to Brother Just Searching, and you can see where we broke down Easter already. It's in, I, I forgot what it's titled. I wish I would have looked it up. But um, but I will say this. Um, let's push that aside. Okay, as the church world, we, look at, we don't look at the eggs. We don't look at the uh, bunnies. We look at Christ and his resurrection. And as a Christian... The story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is very important. One, the death of Christ is where sin was defeated. Hell was over; it was defeated in the grave. Why do I say that? Because when he died, he saved the sinners. There was people that could not go to heaven until Christ died and released them from a place called uh, paradise. And in the Bible, it says that Jesus went to hell and preached or declared the, 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 the glorious working of the Lord. And he, um, he, he released the captives and brought them to heaven. And when he resurrected, he showed the world that his death on the cross was enough for salvation. And he lives today. Now, you might be an atheist. You might be an agnostic. You might be somebody that don't believe that. And you have every right to. But I'm just going to tell you that I have hope. 
that because of that death, burial, and resurrection that I'm going to heaven and I'm going to live forever. I'm going to live throughout all eternity. A thousand years is just a sneak peek of what we're going to see in eternity. And I want, I want my audience to know, and y'all know I'm a Bible believing Christian. I want y'all to remember this weekend. Cause like I said, there's some people that, that, Oh, it's just a four day. It's just a three day weekend. We get off on good Friday and we get to go party for three days. Just remember what this is about. It's not about the bunnies. It's not about the eggs. It's not about the chickens. It's not even about going to church. A lot of people, oh, we got to go to church and fulfill our religious duty. No, it's remembering the sacrifice that Christ paid. Think about it. Christ came from a glorified heaven to live 33 years on this earth and to suffer a horrible death for us to live again. For us to have new life and to have it more abundantly. That's what the Bible says. So my message for you this weekend is to remember the 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 the, the remember Christ. And if you're a Christian, listen to this. Take the opportunity to share Jesus with somebody. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something and then we're gonna wrap this up and go home. I I started this podcast uh almost three and a half years ago, four years ago. I started right after the 2020 election. I think it was two weeks after. And I thought this was all going to be about politics. I really did. Until I met a man about four months after, and he was a, he was a podcaster. And he started listening to this show. And he started calling me, asking me questions because of what I said on this podcast. I had to learn that, that this podcast wasn't just about politics. It was about sharing my faith. And this individual told me that he was struggling and I started witnessing to him. And that person told me a few weeks after our initial conversation about faith said, look, I'm giving my life to Jesus and he's living for Jesus today. Not because I talked about politics. He didn't he, mean him greet almost everything about politics. What changed his life was the message I brought on this podcast. And look, I know I'm a minister. I know I'm a youth director. I know, I know I'm all that. I, I work in ministry. I have two podcasts where it's, it's basically talking about the Bible and biblical beliefs. But you need to listen here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a Christian, you should share your faith. If I can do it over a microphone talking politics, you can go ahead and do it on your everyday life. Let people know about Jesus. And this weekend is a perfect opportunity to do that. If you love Jesus, you're going to do it. And if you're not a Christian, well, you can always reach out to me on my TikTok or my Facebook or my Twitter. And you can ask me, hey, how do I get saved? And I'll be gladly, I'll gladly tell you the gospel of Jesus Christ. The world, this world's in a lot, of, this world has a lot of problems. But as somebody asked me a while back, how do you keep sane following politics? Because my hope is not in Donald Trump. My hope is not in Joe Biden. My hope is not in Congress. And my hope is not in the Senate. My hope and my faith is placed in Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He has never been elected and he's never going to be dethroned. He made this world. He is God Almighty. And guess what? I love him and I love you guys. And I want to thank you, as always, for listening to this show everyone that listens, uh, even the people that don't like me. Okay. And look, I get them on TikTok. I, I glance every so often on these videos and I see people make nasty comments at me. I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. Even the people that, that, that say I need to go to the gym. I know that. Oh, I know that. Uh, but Everybody that's listening right now, I love you guys. And I thank you that, that you're here. Even the ones that don't like me. That means you're listening a little bit. Uh, everybody that's on TikTok, everybody that's on um, YouTube, everybody that's on Rumble, everybody that listens to this podcast on the audio sides, Apple, uh, iHeart, Amazon, Spotify, all of you. I love you guys. And I want to thank you, as always, for listening. Please remember to share to your social media accounts. 
and to tell people about Jesus Christ this weekend. Want to give a shout out to my good friends at Hair Club, great American company. They go ahead and help people every day reserve their hair uh, to resolve their hair loss. If you can hit the link at the bottom, go check them out if you have hair loss issues and they talk to one of their consultants. They will help you out. Use the promo code BGS Media 10 and they'll give you 10% off the price or and they'll give you some special uh, rates for going on there and using my promo code. So again, until next time, be blessed, be encouraged. You have a good one.